What's up, what's up guys? This is Astronox and let's showcase Serbia in Azimana Khan. Can she perform as well as in Golem 11 or Wyvern 11? Because I did showcase both of those already and Golem was insane. Wyvern, she's doing very, very good. Three-man setups there, but in Azimana Khan, I'm gonna bring her in, uh, well, a four-man setup. We need some AOE because those uh, cocoons, they need to be dealt with, right? And uh, I mean, let's uh, let's have double Bellonas in there and Tamarine plus Sermia. I want to see what kind of damage she can actually dish out. Uh, hopefully, those cocoon they get uh, taken care uh, care of. But yeah, she's plus 15 skill ups, guys. She does so much damage, so much single target damage. 4400 attack uh, on a speed set. It's good for PVE for PVP. I mean, I wish I had attack or destruction set instead. Portrait of the Savior. Let's see what kind of numbers she can uh, she can deal. And I've got her exclusive equipment for skill number one. And I love when this thing triggers, man. I love it. And it does trigger on a dual attack as well. And it does make up for some insane burst damage potential. So 258% crit damage, 145 speed. Uh, survival is actually decent. Uh, effectiveness, 22%. To be honest, we don't want that unhealable to drop on the boss because... Uh, three debuffs and all debuffs get cleared so you don't want to bring too many debuffs but that's not the case with our team we do have uh, a few debuffs already so anyways that's Sermia for you guys in this run now Seaside Bellona that's her stats I have her on speed boots so uh, she's just gonna go more often I guess uh, I guess with attack percentage boots it'd be better because she would deal more in with her volley uh, of like, her cleave with skill too uh, taking out the cocoons uh, more easily. Rosa Hargana works for her skill too. It's not actually her turn when she actually triggers this thing. So it does get the 30% attack increase, which is really great, you know, for PvE. Uh, the uh, the Rian Guard drink is better uh, for PvP, right? Uh, but yeah, you can definitely use Rosa Hargana in PvP as well. So you don't really need you don't need any enhancements for PvP. Of course, you get the, the 234 attack increase uh, if you do uh, you know limit break this thing. But the dual attacks, who really care about this? Uh, it, it does trigger though in PvP in, in PvE as well. But it's mostly about the 30% attack increase. Anyways, uh, moving on here, we got Bellona. Bellona doesn't have that much attack, but she's on unity speed, uh, a decent amount of speed, 198, 193 uh, percent crit damage, 67 effectiveness. So, I mean, she does have some skill ups. She doesn't have the last one because uh, pretty costly. She does have memory imprint here, and this is actually quite helpful because you are able to uh, dispel one buff each from all enemies when using a butterfly fan and you need to take out this frenzy off of the boss or the damage will become too much for your team to uh, deal with and i have her on infinity infinity basket so i can increase the dual attack chance of my teammates whenever it's her turn and they will deal 20 percent more uh well yeah more damage whenever uh, they, if a dual attack actually happens so Tamarine, she does have a Dispel as well. Definitely your go-to, a PV healer, an amazing hero. You know, I have the right skill ups for her, uh, skill one who cares. Now uh, she's on speed and hit because, well, you need some effectiveness on her if you want this Dispel when she's in Idol's form to, uh, well, remove the Frenzy potentially or Dispel whoever, like whatever target uh, you're facing, you know, in... Uh, well, she, you can bring her in so many different areas of the game. Pretty much everywhere. Uh, arena, you know, for PvP, you can use her on offense, but uh, not, not so much for defense, though. So, yeah, one just Potion Valve for her so she can clear some debuffs. It's almost max styles at pl uh, plus uh, 27, so 95% chance. So let's uh, let's go in there, shall we? Let's see uh, if Sermia can actually do her job and deal a bunch of damage. Uh, I, I want to see if it will actually work. You know, I do have Champion Zerato. I could bring him for this, but I'm not. I mean, with Illa's Valen on uh, Champion Zerato, he's able to take care of the Frenzy. He's definitely a hero that is harder to obtain. Yes, only a 4-star, but he's a Moonlight hero, uh, you know. Uh, this team is definitely not your free-to-play team. It's just to showcase Sermia. I want to deal with the eggs in a timely manner so she can actually do her single uh, target damage 
against the boss. So, uh, and I do have defense break from Seaside Bellona. I do have it from Bellona as well. So we'll see if we can make it happen. We do have a backup attack uh, increase from Tamarine. And almost 20k here, 19.5. And that didn't uh, trigger Portrait because the HP was low. It was definitely a massive overkill right there. So let's see here. One just Potion Vol took the debuff off of uh, Sermia. Uh, Tamarine definitely like is able to keep up the group. Uh, Sometimes the burst damage might be too high. Maybe you need to up the survival of your, uh, you know, your hero here. That's the thing. She's not gonna do anything because the cocoons are up and the boss has crazy. Well, she she's still managing to do 5.5k, you know. But the boss has a really good survival right now. Now they're gone. Now they are gone. So what I'm hoping is a defense break. It's right there. And what I want is her to attack the boss without those damn cocoons, right? So, nope. And, oh, the boss went. Are you kidding? Are you kidding? I hope they get those cocoons down so we can, once again, that's it. She's still doing some damage, right? But it could be way higher if the ads were dead. Way higher. So, unfortunately, we gotta go through this. I'll do multiple runs. I mean, two or three, we'll see. But... Definitely, like, increasing the attack on Boots of Seaside Bellona is definitely something that will help you a lot. Okay, here we go. Uh, 7.2k. And again, that's the exclusive equipment for you guys. But no greater attack buff. And, uh, yeah, that's definitely what you want. Uh, you want the skill 3. Oh, God. There's, some, there's a casualty already. There's a casualty. The healing is kind of garbage. The healing is garbage at the end. It gets reduced. The reduction is actually quite substantial. Decreased damage suffered from a single attack by all allies by 80% when there's an add up. So there's that. Uh, healing decreased by 50% when uh, the boss is, uh, what, what was it, below 30% uh, HP. So I didn't see the number, the, the last attack of Sermia against the boss. I don't know if Defense Break was on the boss, but her performance is uh, not so... She's not doing so great, you know? Seaside Bellona, of course, uh, she's the MVP. Well, uh, Tamarine's kind of the MVP because she's keeping the group up. Yeah, she took one for the team too. So, yeah, the constant cleaving from Seaside is just... Uh, broken you know you guys know about it uh, pvp pve it's just uh insane it's just insane she's like two heroes in one basically uh it's like two damage dealers in one almost but i mean not uh, i mean subpar damage dealers where i'm not talking about like top tier damage dealers but it's basically because sermia cannot do her job because the cocoons are up right and Bellona falls in about the same category that's the thing. Uh, she does have double AoEs. She can do her skill 3 uh, when she builds uh, 5 focus. So it's not so bad. It's not so bad. Now, I really want to see Sermia uh, against defense down with greater attack buff. Uh, her skill 3 against the boss. Hopefully above 50% HP. I want to see how much it actually hits for. I mean, you could have her in some, like, one-shot team if you can take care of the Cocoon's ASAP. If the timing's right, the defense breaks up, and you're getting that greater attack buff, and then, like, followed by skill 3. If you can make all that happen with Portrait of the Savior, you can do some insane damage. But you gotta take out the ads. You gotta take out the ads. And they show up at the start right here. Um... And here's the second AoE, and it should be enough. Okay, we got the defense break. That's kill one, 14k. That's the thing, though. That's the thing. 14k got up to 19k, only 5k from Seaside. She does a lot of damage. She does a lot, but uh, the condition is no ads needs to be up, and that's a big condition for her. Uh... If you can make your team take out those adds consistently, you know, uh, a cleaver that just ha deals a lot of damage uh, whenever they do 
cleave, then uh, you'll be good. Like, I'm talking like a Vildred, right? Uh, a Vildred uh, can just destroy those uh, those cocoons and he, he can attack twice easily. Arbiter Vildred. Well, any aoe -er that does have high amount of attack and crit damage can do very well. Okay, 7.7k, no defense down. Unfortunately, we have everything but the defense down and it's gonna be how much damage? 13.3. We are missing Portrait of the Savior as well. So, if defense break was there, I think the boss might have been dead. But three debuffs basically clears all debuffs. Look at this. Bye-bye debuffs. Yeah, it, it's definitely annoying. So, dual attack with Tamarine. She could have triggered skill one with uh, the exclusive equipment. This run seems like it was going, it's going faster than the previous one. Yeah, uh... You see, she did a bit better, but she missed too many opportunities because the ads were still up. So uh, I need, I think I need to like up my attack on my C side. So it's more consistent, like the cocoons are taken care of and then she can show her full potential here. But to be honest, running hunts, it's about three manning with an ad. So you're getting XP on the side. It, it's very nice when you're doing it this way. Uh, makes it very easy to six star your heroes but to be honest as mana cunt is not a place that you're gonna be farming that much you do need immunity sets uh, maybe you want to push for that rage set so you you have some big numbers in pv maybe in some cases it's gonna help you for pvp as well with a with a proper setup but yeah i mean you're gonna be farming wyvern 11 most of the time uh, so yeah, Sermia can be used there uh, quite well, especially if you did the investment of plus 15-ing her, uh, her Mola Goras, her skills, I mean, but yeah. This is, uh, this is a hero that is definitely worth being invested into, and uh, so far, I mean, from what I've seen in Golem and in uh, Wyvern, her damage is definitely up there, and uh, definitely... Definitely uh, a hero that I, I'm glad I did invest into. I did showcase her in the raid as well. I did showcase her uh, in Arena PvP. I will showcase her in Arena uh, some more. Uh, I believe the second video should be out by now. Uh, actually, it's going to be released before uh, this video. Oh my god, 33.7k. We did it, boys. Here, 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 here it is. My god. Defense break, greater attack buff, skill 3, portrait of the savior. 33.7 she went crazy she went ham on this one she still had the greater attack buff she had a uh, defense break on the boss good okay finally we got it on the last one because that's the last one i'm doing so i will be showcasing her more uh yeah golem wyvern i've showcased that you can check that out if you if you haven't yet and uh, Halls of Trials, I want to showcase her there. I want to showcase her in the Abyss as well, because her damage is definitely through the roof. Uh, Daydream Joker is definitely an artifact that uh, fa facilitates uh, the, uh, you know, the Abyss. But yeah, uh, Automated Tower, whenever like they release a hard difficulty, I will showcase her there as well. So let's see here. Look at this. This is more like it. That is some nice damage on this one because the conditions were met, those cocoons were down, and she's she had that defense break. That greater attack buff uh, has a pretty good chance of being up because, I mean, that skill 2 and 2 skill 3 is just going to happen no matter what. I mean, if it's up, right? But she opens up with skill 3 if it's available, and then it's skill 2 and 2 skill 3. It's, it's definitely a lot of damage. Uh, you know, not your top pick for a Zimanak hunt, unfor uh, unfortunately, unless unless you're able to deal with uh, these cocoons. You can have defense break in your group. And uh, yeah, you don't need an attack buffer uh, part of the group if she's going to be like that that big damage dealer. The thing is, maybe your cleaver, right? Maybe your cleaver that needs to take care of the cocoons does rely on attack uh, buff. Uh, maybe not. That would be the best, to be honest. So you can get straight down to business and have her deal uh, extreme amount of damage. So yeah, I mean, definitely, uh, I'm glad. I'm glad it actually happened on the last run. But anyways, that's going to be it for this one, guys. Thanks for watching. I'm Astronox. Like, comment, and subscribe for more. Press the bell icon like to be notified whenever I release a new video. And check out my other videos. They should be showing up on the screen now. I got playlists of all sorts, baby. PvE, PvP. 
uh, Arena, Guild Wars, Guides Tips and Autos, and Abyss Floor 62 Plus, as well as Best Starter Guides for my early to mid game players. If you want to progress fast, join us on uh, well the community Discord server. It's in the description if you want to you know get help, help the community, uh, talk about other games. Uh, but yeah, uh, good luck with all you do, guys. That's really it for this one. Peace out for now.